Hey guys, welcome back to Axangel RC. Since many of you have asked me to do a tutorial on how I wire up the autopilot and FPV systems for my planes, I decided to put together a simple tutorial showing how and what I do to get it done. It is pretty simple with very good results as far as my experience goes. All right, so let's dive into this. This build, as many of my current builds, will include an AKK Omnibus F4 Pro board and I tend to veer towards that one because it is the v2 which has proven to work flawlessly for me so far and also they are some of the cheapest boards out there just so you know underneath it there will be a pdb with 5 volt and 12 volt filtered outputs to power the video system the board i usually go for is either the matek version of it or the akk version of it links are in the description below these are the same and have been working very well for me on a number of models. I'm going to pair this one with the NZ Micro GPS unit which is a U-Block 7N unit and will be also compatible with the MyFly Dream Antenna Tracker Air module which I'm also going to use on this build so I can take full advantage of my antenna tracker and thus extend my video range quite considerably without the need to use higher power video output but would rather use more directional antennas. I'm also going to be using the FR Sky R9 mm receiver with the stock nonti antenna as it has proven itself and is quite capable not to mention that it weighs virtually nothing and weight is something you would want to keep to a minimum and keeping in line with that i'm also going to be using the akk fx2 ultimate mini video transmitter which is capable of up to 1.2 watts of output and you can be sure that i am going to take full advantage of that now getting to work with the AKK F4 Pro board you do get some pin headers to solder to the board and I do prefer to do it makes things a bit easier to move around afterwards I usually cut them to size and place them on the board which I then turn over so I can solder them on soldering them on is as easy as switching on your soldering iron getting some good soldering wire and getting to work at around 400 degrees you need to hold the soldering iron very shortly for things to melt and fuse together so don't overdo it once the soldering is done or even before that depending on your setup you may want to remove this diode here which will sever the connection between the power rail on the pins and the board you have to do this when you want to power the servos on that rail from the ESC for instance or an external back on very small models and you will not be also powering the board which will prevent a lot of headaches when its regulator and the external one clash and burn something out i don't remove it because i usually make an external power harness for the servos but i did remove it on my mini r-wing build because that is how i power the servos you can read about it in my blog which is also linked below Alright, so since I've already soldered a wire to the R9MM receiver, I can directly plug it to the SBUS in port on the F4 Pro board. Right next to the servo pins is where the GPS needs to go, and on the GPS I have to split the TX wire coming from it to also go to the antenna tracker module so it can listen in on those coordinates. So first I strip some of the cable on the GPS and cut the wire so I can also change the connector. Keep in mind that all the wiring I'm doing on this build is not random. I measure every single wire length for the plane in question so that when I get to installing it in the plane everything fits just right. It won't be too short which only creates more work or too long which ends up making Making a mess. Next up is removing the existing pins from the micro JST connector which can easily be done with a very small screwdriver or the tip of a hobby knife and then arranging them according to the F4 Pro plug out schematic. I will not be using a compass so two of the pins will remain unused. And now the time has come to solder all of this together but don't forget that you also need to split the TX wire coming from the GPS unit because it also needs to go into the antenna tracker air module. Once the soldering is done I use the hot air unit on my soldering station to shrink the tubing. It is very convenient. So this is what you should end up with. TX wire from the GPS goes to the RX wire 
uh, on the antenna tracker module and the micro JST connector goes to the F4 Pro board so this completes this stage of the build. Since I am building this system for the Zoht Talent GT the lengths of wire are measured so that the GPS can sit in its allotted space on the plane and still be able to have just the right length of wire to reach the autopilot and the antenna tracker module. Next is the PDB to which I will be adding some wires and connectors to get power and to power the video system in turn via the filtered 5 volt and 12 volt outputs. For this part I have also measured the lengths of wire that I'm going to need and I'm also going to crimp on connectors to suit my needs. The 5 volt regulator will power the Runcam 3S camera so I don't risk it running out of battery mid flight. The 12 volt output will power the antenna tracker module, camera and video transmission transmitter unit. Oh and a quick hint, I guess most of you know this but just in case, always pre-tin the wires and the soldering pads before actually putting the two together. Makes it much easier and quicker and you don't end up overheating stuff. Now these pins I'm soldering on right now will take the battery power from the red JST cable coming out of the ESC on the Zoch Talon GT Rebel and this will power the regulators for the video system as well. I chose this because it uses what was already provided with the plane without the need to modify any of its wiring. Then I proceeded to solder the cables to the filtered 5V and 12V outputs and also the cable that would power the external back which in turn would then power the servos. After that a quick mock assembly of the system to see how everything fits and it is looking sharp which leads to one of the last things for this build, the power cables going to the flight controller. Since the F4 Pro has a current sensor on board you have to pass the wires coming from the battery through it to get a reading and on the output will be the ESC. As usual especially with thicker cables pre-tinning the cables and solder pads makes it much easier to do this. I used a long piece of cable and soldered one end to the input and the other to the output. Did that both for the positive and negative connections. The negative cables for the input and output need to be soldered on the same pad so I do like to tangle them up together nicely before soldering makes it a lot easier. Next I cut the cables according to the length I would need on each side. The input from the battery needs to be a bit longer to accommodate for it moving around to find the CG while the one for the ESC can be short because that will not move and it is already long enough to reach the controller anyway. Once the cables are the correct length and don't forget to take into account the stripped part of the cables as well, tin them, solder on XT connectors and be done with it. The XT60H connectors with the end caps are a pretty nice and convenient option to make sure nothing will short back there and also are easier to work with than heat shrink. But this is not over yet, since I don't want to have any servos connected to my flight controller directly, I need to make a power harness for them. I do that by taking a 3 pin header with as many slots as you need for your current project and then solder all the middle pins together and also the pins at one of the sides. This would be the power side of the harness so all servos would get power from the external back. Make sure that after soldering the two rows are not touching to avoid shorts. Then I tin and solder cables to the remaining row which would be the signal wires that would go to the flight controller. This way I can keep the dirty power for the servos and any interference they create away from the rest of the system. After soldering everything up I cover the bottom of the harness with hot glue to avoid shorts. Once the connectors are crimped to the other side of the cables the harness is finally done. Connect an external back to one of the end pins to power the servos and it is ready for use. Next would be the video transmitter and since I am not going to power the camera from it I can remove some of the wires that will not be necessary and did also crimp a server connector to the remaining cables to make it easier to plug into the antenna tracker module. Now even though the video transmitter only plugs into the antenna tracker module the camera actually needs to plug into the F4 Pro board's video input pin first 
so you can have the OSD from that on the screen and then a cable needs to go from the video output pin on the board to the video input on the antenna tracker module. If you're not using an antenna tracker that video output should go to the video transmitter directly. Note that I am not powering the camera or the video transmitter from the F4 Pro board. I just don't trust those onboard regulators to last. Everything else though works perfectly. And so this completes this build and since the whole system is now ready with the proper length of wire, installing it in the plane takes very little time and everything looks so tidy at least compared to the horror show on my Ranger 2400. Yeah, kinda shows this wiring job was not quite done in the same fashion. Also, since I've done this install quite a few times, I know that it works quite well, also proven by the maiden flight of the Talon GT. This same system can be done with very little alteration with most other F4 or F7 boards out there that are compatible with Arduino Plane. Not F3 sadly as they don't have the memory needed to run it. Oh and just in case you are wondering how to get Arduino Plane on this board, here on the top right is a link to the tutorial for that so make sure you check it out. This is all for now, if you have any questions leave them in the comments below and I will try to answer to the best of my knowledge. Links for all items shown and used in this video can be found in the description below and should you decide to buy literally anything via those links, you would be supporting this channel at no additional cost to you and you will have my unending gratitude as this is my full time job. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to really thank all the people who have supported me so far in any way and would continue to do so. If you have enjoyed this video and found it useful please feel free to like, share and subscribe if you haven't already and don't forget to also hit that bell button so you can be notified when I upload a new video. Also consider following me on Facebook for more regular updates. Don't forget to tin first and I will see you in the next one.